I tried to have a dog in my video for clickbait, but he decided he wanted to sit behind me. Uh, hey guys, Gregsy96 here, coming at you with a video that a Twitch follower and Twitter follower suggested I try doing something along these lines. Uh, Kemet, you know who you are. Uh, Kemet thought with some story times he's come into on the... Uh, like Big Box Weekly and just in the middle of my streams and my stories and perspectives, he thought I should start doing like a commentary type of series. Um, so, I felt motivated to do one of these today, so I figured I would try one of these today. The topic of today's video is commitment and why commitment is important. Uh, so I won't specifically go into why I was motivated to do this video today. But we're going to talk about commitment and why it's important, which is what I just said. I'm already repeating myself, this is going great. But basically, you know, obviously commitment is when you say you're going to do something, you actually do it. Right? And that seems like a simple enough concept, right? If you say you're going to do something, you do it. If you know you're not going to be able to do something, you don't commit to it. Well, commitment can get a little more complex. It can. I wish it didn't, but it can. Sometimes, um, things happen out of your control. Like, you're in the middle of a big project, and you get sick. Or you're in the middle of a big project, and you get slammed by some other big project that you were already working on, but it wasn't as big before, and now the project is freaking huge. And it hits you like that. So the previous big project is now your small project, and you can't find the time to work on it. Alright, so sometimes commitment gets hard. You know, things happen that make it so you're not really able to do what you initially said you were going to do. Um, and there's certain ways to handle that, right? My tried and true method of handling that is I go into what I call, like, my Z-sleep mode, which is short for zero sleep, um, where I will just couple days go without sleep to get projects done. Um, for me, I have I think the longest I've ever gone is I've gone 96 hours without sleep, then I slept for 12, and then I did another 72 hours to get done what I said I would get done. Um, that was like senior year of high school on a vacation. I was super behind on a robot I was working on. So I did 96 straight hours of work, slept for 12, did another 72 straight hours of work, and got all caught up in that span of... Oh man, that's like more than a week's worth of hours, huh? <laughs> that's a lot of hours, Jesus Christ. That's that's a significant amount of hours. Wow, that's like a week. That's literally like a week of straight work. Holy crap. I never really thought of it like that until just this moment. But like, yeah. But that's obviously not the way everyone can deal with it. Um. You know, not everyone can deal with it like that, because I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy. I've been doing that for a while. I can do it. I can get it done. Um, again, same type of thing. When I was freshman and sophomore in college, um, on top of being an engineering student, robotics engineering specifically, which is basically a triple major of electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science, I was commuting to school. It was an hour away each day. That's actually, if you recall, the morning commute series I used to do. Which I guess is pretty close to this type of a thing, actually. Um, well, maybe I'll bring the morning commute back. Why not, right? Uh, but if you recall, that was the similar type of thing. Um, but that spun from the fact that I was spending 10 hours a week driving and 20 hours a week on campus. And I wasn't finding the time to make the videos that I had committed to you guys, my audience, that I was going to make. So I found a creative solution to be able to do that. And from time to time, I've always fallen back to I make a video on my freaking car if I need to to get a video out. You know, obviously there's situations, there are situations that exist beyond your control. I had a concussion. I couldn't edit videos. I couldn't sit down and play games at a computer. My head just hurt. I was sleeping most of the time. That's something beyond your control. Um, you know, that things like that happen that break patterns. That made me have to break commitments at my job as well. Um, you know, there are, there are beyond your control moments. But again, there's, there's ways to fight it. And as far as I'm concerned, in my personal opinion, the way that you 
the way that you never, ever, ever handle making a commitment and then having something else come up is you never just break the commitment. You don't do that. That is the absolute worst way to handle it. You never break the commitment or try to pawn it off onto somebody else or whatever. You just, you don't. You know, um, I've had issues in the past where my zero sleep method of handling commitment overload doesn't work, right? It, it won't always work. Sometimes you legitimately just don't have enough time. You underestimate the scope of a project. Um, you get hit with another equally large project at the same time. You accidentally, you know, you, you, you screw up your time management. Things do happen. But you just never quit, you know. Sometimes it's the type of thing where you go and you say, Hey, look, I'm going to get this done. I told you I was going to get this done. Um, but I'm not going to be able to get it done at X time, right? I need until Y. Like, you know, hey, I know you wanted this thing on your desk for Monday. It realistically, you know, and you got to be honest, you know, I underestimated the scope of this project. It will be on your desk on Wednesday morning. Is that okay? And the other problem is, sometimes you have to be willing to accept the fact that the answer is no, that's not okay. Right? Sometimes you do have to be willing to accept that when things happen out of your control and you have to break a commitment, it's not always going to be a good ending. Right? The type of thing where you break a commitment, well, maybe, just maybe, you're just not going to be asked to do anything anymore. Right? Like, if you have a long track record of hitting and actually hitting goals and making commitments you make, if you screw up once, you're probably fine. But if you don't have any sort of track record of meeting the commitments you've set out to do, or if you just haven't, or if you're the new guy, right, and the very first commitment you have, right, say you're the new guy on the scene and you have a project you're supposed to do, and you're put on this project, it's the very first project you have, you have a commit by date, you know, say the order is committed to ship on July 4th. Well, Let's just pretend it's, it's, okay, it wouldn't be committed to ship July 4th, right? It's committed to ship July 1st, or June 31st, whatever last Friday's date was. Well, I'm sitting here on July 4th talking to a camera right now, but say as of today, July 4th, the committed to ship last Friday order isn't going to go until tomorrow, right? Well, if that's your first commitment, and you have no track record of doing good and hitting all of your goals and even hitting them early, you're just never going to get big projects like that again. Or if they do give you a big project like that again, you better not make the same mistake twice. And you better not, you know, you better not, you know what I mean? Like you just, you can't make the same mistake twice. You don't agree to commits. You just don't agree to commits that you know you're not going to be able to hit. It's important to actually properly estimate the scope of work know what you're capable of like that is the biggest thing is if you don't know what you're capable of how are you ever going to make appropriate commit dates you know or appropriate commitments as a whole and god you better not back out of a commitment like if you if you back out of a commitment like if you deliver late on a commitment that's bad but if you back out in the middle of a commitment oh my god is that so much worse and if you make a commitment, haven't even started on it yet, and then you realize, oh, this is well outside of my scope of work, I can't handle this, you better not quit before you even start. Like, that is that is the order of how things go. Like, best case scenario is you deliver early on the commit date. Second best case scenario is you just deliver on the commit date. You know, there's no super extra excitement, but you're still doing fine. Worse, uh... You know, starting to get into really shitty cases is you deliver late for whatever reason. Depending on the reason, you might be okay with that. If the reason you're delivering late on your commit is because you got into a car accident and you were in the hospital for a couple days, if anyone says anything other than, well, shit, you did the best you could and you still got it here in a pretty reasonable time, they're not worth even worrying about. They just aren't, you know. But then you start getting into you quit in the middle of a commitment for whatever reason or you quit before you even start and you just you quit you try to pass it off to someone else like that creates a very i hit the 10 minute mark on my camera which is the most it can do internal recording because of 
you know, memory card formatting bullshit. Uh, but, <laughs> so sorry, that's why you saw the jump there. Um, but as I was saying, you know, you start hitting where you mm, quit the middle of a commitment or you don't even start when you're supposed to. You get into really bad situations. And regardless of their commitments at a job, I think I'm not repeating myself. I think this was after the camera cut off, but I didn't watch the whole thing back. I just kind of watched the end. I don't think I'm repeating myself. Sorry if I am. Now, it doesn't have to just be a commitment at, like, a job, for example. You know, um, speaking from personal experience, you never know what... You never know what people you're going to meet, right? You never know who you're going to meet and who you could ask questions to. Um, like, just recently, even. I haven't even acted on this yet. So I really, you know... With me, I'm a very polarizing person, so I hope I didn't burn this bridge. I just delved deep into the rabbit hole of a computer vision system. Well, it turns out, one of my contacts, or I say contact, a person that I have met through online video, a community of strangers, right? People I have no idea who they are. I don't know Bob from Mary from Jane, right? Turns out, one of the people I've met through this thing is considered an industry expert on 3D graphics, computer vision, and virtual reality. <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet, so that's why you don't want to burn bridges, right? You know, you start burning bridges, you don't know if this person... Especially, you know, if you don't know who the person is exactly, you don't know if they're freaking CEO for a massive corporation who... You would have had the skill sets to pull a six-figure job from them, for example, if you made a good impression. You know, when you pass off that silly little online thing that you committed on, you never know who you're going to piss off. I've screwed this up before. I have. Years ago, I screwed this up. I met someone on Facebook. Um, it was a Facebook group we were a part of, and they were asking for a monitor arm to mount their monitors, specifically the ones they had onto a, what the hell is it, a vaulted ceiling, so they needed, like, very specific type of mount, and they also wanted the mount to, like, so they could mount their monitors so that they were actually, like, at a proper, like, three-monitor setup with the side monitors angled, but they wanted to be able to take the whole thing and swing it up to the ceiling totally flat. Like, I started on this because I was like, oh yeah, that's easy, and then I realized it was more complex, and then I just kind of abandoned the project because it was just some stranger on Facebook. And, you know, I feel bad about that. I hate doing that type of thing. It's important, like, you know, who, who do I know? Like, who's that guy going to become in the future that I'm going to be sitting here kicking myself going, well, shit, I really, really should have just designed the stupid thing for him. You know, am I going to be kicking myself down the road because he ends up like freaking CEO of Google or something where I could have a nice easy job because I've done good work for this guy before and we have a good rapport going? You know, when you make a commitment, you got to stick to it. If for nothing else, it, forget even the concept that you have to stick to it because it's the right thing to do. Because I'm not going to sit here and preach and say you always have to do the right thing. Stick to the commitment for the selfish fact that you never know if the people you are committing to are someday going to be in a position to hire you for a lot of money. Right? Make yourself reliable, always, for the simple fact that you never know who is going to notice that you're reliable and that you do good work that might someday down the road offer you a job <laughs> that pays way better than what you were making at the time. Right? I speak from experience on that one, too. The place I'm currently working, well, it was a guy I met through robotics, and we never really talked too much, but we developed good rapport when we did. He knew I did good work, and I get a call from him like a year after the last time I had seen him saying, hey, the place I work, we're now hiring technicians. Are you interested in a job? You know, you never know who you're going to make, you never know what bridge you're going to burn. 
or what bridge you're going to build that's going to hurt you or help you. And breaking commitments is sure thing to only hurt you. Um, I think I've rambled on long enough about this. I wasn't going off a script or anything here. I was just kind of speaking off the head, as so to speak. So uh, I hope the video mostly made sense. I'm sorry if it didn't. Um, but it's just I an event today, this morning, triggered me really hard about this topic. And it just pissed me off. And I needed to make a video about it. So there you go. There's the video. Um, if you've made it all this way in the video, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Not necessarily this topic, obviously, because that would just be silly, but I mean this style of video where I'm just kind of talking about some subject that's relatively important or telling, you know, a story time type of thing. This type of video where it's just I sit down and talk into a camera. Um... I guess that's, yeah, that should be about it for this one. Um, you know the drill, gregc96.com, bigboxagamers.com. Uh, actually, that's a thought, too. If you like this type of thing, but you don't like the incoherent babbling that is a video, let me know if you think I should start doing, like, maybe a written blog on gregc96.com about this type of thing. I'm totally open to that. Writing it out lets me get my thoughts down a little more coherently than just doing a video like this. Um, maybe I do a written piece to go alongside these videos. Oh, puppy. Hey, come up here. Come here. Let me get some of that sweet clickbait. Come on. No? Uh, he, he wanted to help me out a little bit here at the end of the video. Um, but yeah. So maybe I'll do a written piece to go along these type of videos. Let me know in the comments if you even liked it. It's not worth the extra work. There's no value proposition if you guys don't enjoy this type of content. So uh, let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you liked it, why not check out one of these two previous videos? Or if you're in the mood to watch more later but not now, that's cool too. You can check out more by subscribing to myself or to the big box of gamers. Just be sure to hit that little bell icon after you've done it so YouTube will notify you when we post a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.